Okay, here we go again. Um, I hope you're ready. You're gonna need coffee. Sit back and enjoy. Okay, yes, you're right. I was gonna to talk to you about the weight of the kits, but let's be honest, everybody knows that the Canon is gonna be heavier than the Olympus and the Fuji gear. So I've just gone to the manufacturer's websites and copied down the weight of everything. And you will discover that, that I can bring a Fuji and Olympus kit with more focal length and more focal range than the Canon for less weight. So I'm going to cover further distance, I'm going to be wider, I'm going to go longer uh, and I'm going to have less on my back. So that really is, has almost become a secondary issue now. So the Canon, sorry guys, it's out of the running. It's a fantastic camera if it's right for you, if you like using the tripod, if you don't have to walk far, um, you're happy with that for your work then by all means buy the Canon. I've been very happy with it when I've used it it's been brilliant it's been well thought out it's a great camera to use but I'm looking to reduce the weight of the kit that I take with me so for me uh, the Canon is is going to go so it comes down to the Fuji and the Olympus so what you're about to see is me getting to grips with both the Olympus and the Fuji systems I use the Fuji taking some portraits which you don't see on here because I, I was too busy trying to take pictures to video it and to vlog about it. But you do see me in the woods before my um, trip to the lakes. And it has to be said that there was a problem unbeknown to me with the Olympus 12 to 100 mil lens, which you'll see in the next few videos. But this is me discovering about both systems and what I thought about them. Um, well, let me let me explain. So I've had a little wonder with the EM1 Mark II and I've got the sort of 12 to 100 kit lens, I'd call it, on. Um, first impressions, I've brought it out without a tripod, thinking that, um, well, assuming that I can take it with the stabilisation. Haven't looked at the pictures yet, but it seems to be working. It's a bit, a bit fiddly. I took some pictures of the dogs um, which have gone back with my wife now. Uh, it's a, some continuous autofocus stuff. Don't normally do sports, and dogs are really hard to photograph anyway because they don't do what you ask them to do all the time. But I've got some pictures, it was tracking okay. I think out of the three cameras, I'd probably take the Fuji for sports, if I'm honest. It seemed to track the uh, people that I were doing the other day much, much better than this did. Uh, then I've been into the woodlands, I've taken some pictures of some trees so with a nice bit of sun as you can see. Most of the time it's been fine, I've been playing with the ISO, been changing things up, got the hang of that a little bit. Occasionally though the viewfinder just goes really dark and decides it needs an exposure of 20 seconds when it really doesn't. Um, so I'm a bit confused about that. Um, had to stop a couple of times and just sort of let the, let the picture finish and then go back and do it again. So I'm not sure what I've done. I'll have a look at the settings. There is definitely a setting on the viewfinder, which 
Okay, I played with it last night, but I don't really know what it does. So I'll have to have a double look in the manual. Overall, I'd say the for this kind of stuff, again, the Fuji is probably better, although I haven't used it for this yet. I was hoping to find some um, fly agaric mushrooms, fungi, but it's not really been um, damp enough yet. So I haven't seen any, haven't come across any. I brought my little Jobo, and the idea was to try out the focus stacking on the Olympus, which I have worked out how to do, and the focus stacking I'd imagine is amazing. So that's something that is really good for. I think the Olympus is going to be really good for things like um, macros, nighttime photography with the star trails. That's the kind of thing that think it's going to happen if I buy the Olympus. I think if I buy it I'm going to get into all sorts of different photography which are possible probably on the Fuji and the Canon but will take a lot more fiddling about with. I think this is going to be really decent for that. Um, so it feels really good. It doesn't feel heavy. Well it, I can I know I've got it but I've got the most drive on as well which I probably wouldn't get but it doesn't feel like there's no way I carry this for the rest of the day. So a mixed bag of impressions. Um, Next time I see you, I'll bring the Fuji out. So good afternoon, so now I'm out with the Fuji XC2. I've just taken some shots with the 100 to 400 zoom. Um, I came across some birds set at a free in a field, so I got out of the car, just took a couple of steps into the field and they all took off and moved about 20 feet. So I did some stuff with continuous shooting, some motor drive stuff. And then I've been shooting some woodland, as you can see. I'm here I've got the, the wide angle 10 to 24 zoom on now just have a little go and it's a lovely camera to use I'm really enjoying it um, I love the shutter sound I just love the fact that you can set all the simulations all the all the dials are really easy to get to um, ISO shutter speed I can do it almost with my eye to the camera uh, not quite as good as the Olympus which is a little bit easier to use I think when you get used to it um, now, an update on the Olympus, there is uh, some very weird things going on because I photographed uh, my Millie, my little dog, as you saw in the first one of these and running towards me on a continuous with the Olympus on burst mode. I had uh, 16 frames per second, no 11, I think I was trying it out on high continuous and shut the speed priority and the exposure is going all over the place and the camera's doing that. I haven't had chance to you wouldn't have a chance to change it that quickly. So there's something definitely odd, definitely wrong with the camera. that particular model um, that would explain why the viewfinder is going dark because what's happening is it seems to be changing its mind on the exposure uh, it's, it was probably a half a second exposure is what I needed for this one and and the camera changed itself to 30 seconds which is a bit weird was why the exposure why the viewfinder went dark and why I couldn't work out what was going on so I've emailed Olympus and that seems like a problem. It's not something I've done. I thought maybe I had spot metering on by mistake. There are a lot of buttons on the Olympus that you can press without knowing. Um, I think you have to be very careful. Everything on this Fuji seems to be a little bit more locked on. So you press those buttons and everything stays locked. And when you're working, a landscape is not so much for a problem, which is pretty much what I do, but for anything else, portraiture, sports photography. Um, I used to work in the school's photography industry and on that, you're just working flat out, you can easily knock a button and not know. So that's kind of in the Fuji's favor, not in the Olympus's favor really. At the moment, this is feeling really nice, I'm really enjoying this, but I'm trying not to let the Olympus's camera, obvious camera fault cloud my judgment. Um, both of these though, I'm happy to use the Canon, probably not so much. It's too heavy. It's not really designed for certainly for stuff, um, for action stuff to photograph. Millie and the dogs I've tried before and it's just a waste of time. Um, and I also wouldn't bring it out with me because of the weight. 
so it just wouldn't be on my neck. The Olympus and this, very happy to carry this around all day. Lovely camera. So those are both in the running. Um, as far as the update of the Olympus is concerned, what I plan on doing now, I'm waiting back, I'm waiting for an email back now to see whether I can drop it off and get it repaired on the way up the lakes tomorrow or whether we're just gonna have to shoot it as it is and assume there's a fault with it, which there is. Um, more to come. It's really important at this point to say that I'm not saying Olympus cameras are unreliable. Okay, clearly that lens, the 12 to 100, had a problem, which is why I was getting the strange exposures and why I wasn't understanding what was going on. But I know the Olympus service is second to none. I've uh, heard really good things about it. They were brilliant on uh, when I emailed them on the phone. The local camera shop had never seen anything like it before, never heard of anything like that before, and I haven't seen anything about it online, so it's just a one-off, I think. Okay, now doing this review, that did not cloud my judgment. Okay, I'm growing up enough to know that things happen. I've worked in the school photography industry where people have dropped stuff all the time. Um, well, occasionally things are broken, things do go bang. So it's then about how quickly these things are repaired uh, and how quickly you can get back into action. And I have no doubt that Olympus will be brilliant at that. So not a knock at the camera, not a knock at the company, just telling you that this was a problem that I had with this particular model. So we've had a little go with the Olympus this afternoon. I've used the 7mm, I've used the um, 12 to 100, and I've also used the big zoom as well, to pick up some landscapes. It's kind of promising, but the light is still a bit too high, really. Um, I find the Olympus quite difficult to use to start with. I realized that really you need a tripod because I couldn't hold the grad and the polarizer. I thought, then I, then I discovered that you can HDR it and I thought, well, maybe that won't work because you still have to have the camera on the tripod, but it switches it very cleverly to high um, motor drive mode, which means you can just whiz them off. So hopefully that's all gonna look good. Very clever Olympus, like that. So we're using the Olympus and I've had a few problems with it. Um, problem, I think there's an actual fault with the 12 to 100 lens because I put it on and the exposure goes all over the place. So this is the 714. I haven't got a filter holder, you can buy one, which means I have to hold the filter in place but because the glass is, or the lens hood is actually shielding this away from the end of the lens, I'm getting a reflection. So I'm having to use my hat over the top of the filter, out of shot, to, to get rid of the reflections. That's kind of like that. Make sure my hands out of the way. It's so wide, this thing, it'll get everything in the, everything you don't want it to get in. 
So that's got rid of the reflections there. Now I've got the adjustments. I've got a two second self timer delay on. One, two, hold the thing still for eight seconds. I'm not using stabilization because it's on the tripod. Now we go to noise reduction. Hopefully there's the shot. Top of Larry Fell, looking out over Windermere to show you in a minute. Um, some beautiful views behind me as well. We left really early this morning for the hotel to get to uh, this point. Walking in the dark with head torches, working with a few just today. And as you can see, I've um, got a new filter holder on the front, which is handy because the rise are working and um, a tick stop grad as well. I'll show you the So it's Tuesday, I'm a bit knackered. <laughs> uh, been up really early, up to um, Lowrig Tarn, no, Lowrig Fell, to take some um, footage up there. But unfortunately, my phone wasn't charged, so I couldn't do an awful lot of video. Been using this all day, the X-T2. It's been enjoyable, I quite enjoyed it, actually. Um, I really like the way this is put together. It's very retro, which I didn't think I'd like. The button feels a bit kind of I don't know, it feels a bit like a Practica I used to own years ago. A bit like an FM2 Nikon, anyone have used those? Um, ISO's there, shutter speed's there, conversation, very simple. Couldn't get it to focus, didn't understand how to focus it. It was focusing automatically, but then I realised that there's some buttons on the back. Quick, that, that does the self-timer. Um, that's the focusing button, up and down. Very, very, very easy to use. I've really enjoyed it. I've changed the shutter speed sound so it makes it sound like a little click. Um, I like the fact that this um, display comes out with some taking some shots down below, down sort of low down. Um, had a good time. It's it. Uh, I had all the lenses on. They've all been great. I like the fact that the filter holder I bought for the 10 to, to 24 fits the 50 to 140. So it's exactly the same filter thread size. I've had the polarizer on all morning. That's been really good. I like the grip. Feels okay. It's not as deep as the Olympus grip, but it's been on a tripod most of the day. Um, I did think that the Olympus might be handheld, might work that way. Probably does, but I haven't used it. It hasn't been working brilliantly. So I've just been using a tripod, which is what I, how I usually use stuff. Um, Things I don't like with it, I think this is very easy to knock. That's You can lock that off, that's easy to knock. I couldn't understand with the bracketing, when I change it to bracketing, um, it changes to ISO 800, which is a weird thing. But um, maybe that's in the manual somewhere. So good morning, it's Thursday. Um, I'm out with the Olympus today and I made a bit of a boo-boo. I've left my tripod in the car, which I thought was gonna be disastrous until I realized that this has got so much stabilization on it. Um, it's, it's brilliant. I've just been shooting the boathouse there at um, Rydale Water. Oh, handheld, this is the 40 to 150 with the 1.4 teleconverter. Um, hand holding at about one and a half seconds. Looks sharp on the back of the camera. obviously bracketed a few try and get something but to be fair the light's not brilliant the colour in the trees isn't brilliant today so I'm not that worried but it's a really nice camera um, there's some really nice features on this so I really like if I can show you what's 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 this okay the lens hood in out ready to shoot not ready to shoot what a brilliantly thought out thing I think Olympus have really, really thought this camera through. Everything they've got on it um, has been brilliantly done. You know, I like the histogram, 
this is a really good when I'm shooting I can also get up with the info button um, take everything off there's some sort of stabilization thing I had on there actually that's no it isn't and that's typical of the camera because this little touch screen here I turned I pressed that somehow turned things off and I was looking for the spirit level so there's the histogram and there's the level but for some reason you can't have that on if you've got this little button here pressed there's lots to lots to make mistakes with I, I think that's a pro and it's also a con um, of that system because it's really really easy to um, to make a mistake and I'm constantly worrying whether I've got the right shutter speed to take a picture of that there we go look at that um, I'm constantly worried whether I've got the right settings on the camera have I moved something have I changed something so that's one of those things that you have to worry about but having said that having been a landscaper most of the time I'm having time to check the custom modes on here have um, made it easier for me because I can click this to custom one uh, and that's my landscape mode so everything I've set for instance uh, a two second delay on the self timer I like to work with if I haven't got a cable release and that's been really really good with this because I can flick it back onto there actually even if I don't it remembers the setting it was last on so it, it brings it up for you which is handy because with the Fuji as soon as the power goes off so let's say I've set something up I'm ready to shoot I'm just waiting for the light the power goes off I then reset it and then all of my settings or certainly the self timer settings gone back to how it was before lots of the settings stay the same but I have to go back in reset the self timer which isn't a big problem it's really easy on the Fuji on the, on the Olympus though it's just set for you so you haven't got to worry about it however if you're trying to shoot in a hurry I would imagine you don't really want the self timer on so who's to say one's better than the other don't know I do like these custom buttons I mean that's really really useful I know that if I'm late for a sunrise and I've been rushing on my Canon that's a really useful feature flick it on I know that I'm gonna get something okay so that's really good hand holding is really good so I'll have a little play with it today um, and I'll have a little report back so that was it for the trip to the lakes the next weekend when I got back I decided to visit my daughter um, my eldest daughter down in, in South London and we spent Saturday night on the South Bank because I wanted to try the Olympus live composite feature so the way this works as I'll explain briefly in the video is that you set the ISO I think I chose 400 ISO um, for this for a nighttime shot a fairly well lit scene of the of the Thames and St Paul's and you adjust the aperture until the exposure says that is correct you take a picture and then you take another picture where you press the button again and what it will then do it was it will then burn in or then uh, expose any highlights that then appear in the frame any highlights that are already there do not get any brighter they do not burn out so St Paul's was lit up and it stays exactly the same because it didn't vary it didn't get any brighter okay but what did happen was as the water was was moving the um, lights that are reflecting were gradually appearing on the screen so you can see it build up at one point we did a picture with an airplane we could see the lights going and you can actually see it trace through the image which is quite amazing so if you could imagine doing fireworks with that you expose for the main picture and then you just leave it open and I left it open at one point about four minutes it's amazing I was painting with light and all sorts of things now you can do these things on the Fuji you can do these things on the Canon but you would have to do several test shots to get the exposure correct and for something like light painting you would have to work really really quickly you could probably work it out on a fast ISO um, and wide open aperture and then if you wanted to shut down the aperture you could adjust the shutter speed accordingly um, but again most of those cameras both of those cameras only go to 30 second exposure so you'd have to have a bold mode you need this it's very complicated Olympus have got this fantastic live composite mode which I think is brilliant so um, let's have a quick look at that now so here we are this is live composite in London at St Paul's this is the Millennium Bridge 
live composite mode, f4.5 on the aperture, 17 mil, and I'm just adjusting the exposure. So there's my correct exposure. Okay, it will now, when I press it again, will just record any lights that hit the sensor. Everything else stays the same. So the, the light reflections off the water will gradually fall, as you can see. What a machine! So there we are, all done. Oof, it's gone a bit cold. I hope you managed to enjoy yours, sorry. So there we are, that was all the, that was the cameras tested in the Lake District and a little bit at home. I've been using them on and off, as you can see, throughout the last couple of weeks. I've made my decision, but I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet. You'll have to find out in the next episode, which hopefully will only be a couple of weeks. So next time I will list the pros and cons of both systems, sorry, all three systems, and I'll tell you the reason for my personal decision, which will be probably be different to yours. But hopefully they'll be of some use to you. Hopefully some of this has been of use to you. Hope you've enjoyed watching my ramblings. Um, if you want to keep up to date, subscribe, um, like it, and leave any comments. If you think you know what I should do, then leave a comment below. Okay, be lovely to hear from you. Until then, Till next time, thanks very much.